Welcome to the Shizrovka Arena in the beautiful city of Minsk in Belarus. Tonight, the Steelers take on the reigning champions of Kazakhstan, Nomad Astana. The Steelers will be hoping for a good start to the Continental Cup Finals with a tough game to come against the top seeds Minsk tomorrow night. Down on the ice at the moment, Robert Dowd is now on, so Cockleton Fretter has got off, but here come Nomad Astana again, coming down the right wing now. And a reach. All the way around the back of the net. Goes back to the blue line. A fierce shot there. It's wide of Irvin's Mustakov's goal. Nelson backhanded, sends it all the way back to the end boards, and Ben O'Connor will control the breakout. We've played one and a half minutes of this opening game. Eerie, isn't it? Because it's such an empty building. It's a fabulous big building. It's like playing a game at the arena in front of 150 people, and uh, you can hear every breath and every noise coming from uh, every player right now. And the puck sent forward, and no matter, Stana come again work to look to work an opening and that's the opening goal of the game and that's Andre Yaklev he just came back to the face-off circle and on the angle just managed to meet beat Irvins Mustakov so it's Astana one Sheffield Steelers nil meanwhile Astana taking a bit more time off the clock maybe a bit early for that and now they do make the breakaway it's fired all they're the way exactly through they're not parking the bush just yet are they no they're not <laughs> they're not quite but they are taking Quite a while to, to break out of that as Kovzalov momentarily brought it forward. Now it is the Steelers with Robert Dowd on the far hand side wheeling in. The puck just bobbled up on him there as he was about to spray the pass to Nelson. Dowd goes flying. Steelers are going on the power play. And meanwhile, Ben O'Connor's just tried to get the shot away, tried to take advantage, and I think Dowd's still down at the moment. Dowd got tripped, uh, got the, the stick in his skates. He's gone down. He's just out of view of us. He's like below the board level. Paul Tether. Former Manchester United speed there, doesn't he, to uh, come across the ice? The dad looks in some state there. He's not moving his feet at all. He isn't. He's kind of almost doubled over. Wah battling down there, and it's freed by Gurkov. A nomad, but they still can't get it out of their zone. Wallace almost manages to control, but nomad are breaking away with it. Here is Dmitry Gurkov at the half boards. Has his pocket picked by Fretter, and that's a here is Marquardt, one-on-one -on -one with a shot! Oh, and a oh. great save there by Kramer. Well, we've seen Matt Marquardt in two penalty shots have a breakaway. One in the Continental Cup and then one only a week or so ago in regular league action. I think he was in Manchester, wasn't he? And he pulled exactly the same move. Now the Steelers trying to win it back, but the pocket is picked and Presnov comes away with it. It's OK, Francilla pinching as he's just done twice there. Gurin sent forward and now a chance and that's a good save from Mustakos but it's still bobbling around the crease, comes back to the blue line, can Astana get a shot off it's blocked down well by Mark Matheson, comes back up to the blue line one player changes and a good interception there from Mark Matheson and it's kept in the zone, looking to work another opening and that's the second goal from Nomad Astana at the back door Gurin is that has it and no matter Stana have doubled their lead within the first three minutes and 48 seconds. And really all that stems from, it's all well and good Francilia pinching in, but then when he's pinched in and he sets up, he's got to make a play. O'Connor sent across the blue line for Francilla. Westerling, lovely little deke, beats the first man. Has to beat Matthew Warr out in front of him. O'Connor, shot sent forward, down low, pad save from Kramer. Back at the half boards. Wa just hands it off to O'Connor. Again, another shot. Saved out in front from Kramer. He's at full stretch. Oh. He's lost sight of the puck. Oh, there's a... Oh, and there's a brawl. And Matthew Wah's throwing some punches at the moment. Well, Matthew Wah... Fretter's just... in there as well. Matthew's and Matthew gone Wah absolutely having... crazy on the guy. Matthew took a swing at the loose puck. And he sticked the goalie's pads. He was then mobbed by the uh, two defencemen. It's Alexander Pelevin who is he, he having to be restrained He's from. He's going to get a roughing call, but I think Matthew's going to come out on the wrong side of this one somehow. I think Matthew might get the slash and then might get the rough as well. Indeed. The official signals towards the box, Matthew Wah. 18.33 remaining in this game. Matheson wins it back, holding off two players. He fires it down center ice between the gap. Excellent clearance from... Mark Matheson, but forward come <laughs> Nomad Stanza again. Looking to set up now. 
And again, there's a, a kind of hush. You can't really hear the Steelers fans below us. And in fact, right on cue, they kick into action. Here it is on the blue line. Patient play. Down low, spread himself, and Scores. that's the third goal. Easy tap in at the back door. Matheson kind of winged down, didn't he? Stretched the body out, trying to prevent the pass. But it was about to come and uh, went Gure to the back door in a simple tap in at the end. Gurin sent it across the crease and Michaelis it was at the back door just to squeeze it home. It was the same play we'd seen not 30 seconds ago, but this time Michaelis was uh, right on top of Mr. Coffs and, and hammered home on the penalty kill. It's Arson Fitzgerald. There's just been a change on the far hand side as Valdix comes onto the ice. Astana come again. It's on the far right hand side. Glove save from Mustakovs and he drops it immediately for Arson to clear. And that's not held in by Astana. Westling checked into the boards at about centre ice. And the Steelers, as Westling goes to the change, on comes Nelson. And there's a chance on in front, and that's the fourth goal for Astana. Moose was left one on one. He went to his backhand side and beat him high. And Nomad Astana have their fourth goal. Nomad Astana four, Sheffield Steelers nil. 17-12 to play, Dave Sims. Well, if you want to know the difference between these two teams, it's top-end finishing. Steelers have had the chances, haven't converted. Nomad Astana have had the chances, have converted. Five on five, five on three, five on four. And uh, when you give them an opportunity, they take it. They're patient in their build-up. So, so a big, big decision that... Paul and Jerry will have to make this evening is if Dowd is out for the tournament is, is how they find a way of playing four blocks how they try and ju juggle the maths if you like well, because it looks that's like, what they'll have to do it looks like an early decision is, is Neely slotting in at that right wing and that's that's like for like although Neely's maybe not the shooter you'd like him it, you know he's not going to replace a, a Robert Dowd but in terms of positional, that, that kind of makes sense, but it's how you go away, uh, you go about adjusting the rest of the lines. As there's a shot there, fired wide from Astana. Fitzgerald sent into center ice for Wallace. Little move there from Wallace. He's got wire ahead of him, and a lovely move there from Tim Wallace, and forced a good save from Great play, Wallace. Graymar. Great play, Top Wallace. Draw, and of Wallace. course, Wall was coming in on the back. And Wallace it is that wins it back, but for Astana, here is oh, a shot there, high and wide from Gurin. Kept in by Astana. It's behind the Steelers' net now, looking to work an opening. Comes back to the blue line, winding up for the shot. Oh, and that's the fifth goal. Lovely play there. He just he faked the shot, the defenseman, he, and then just picked out the man at the back door. Clock still counting down, actually, which probably won't be a bad thing. But 48-36 uh, is going to be the time of that fifth goal. But he looked like he was shaping to shoot as he wheeled in from the blue line and just found the man at the back door. And it was an easy tap home past Mustakovs. We talked about it earlier. It's, it's all about taking those opportunities and better finishing. It could have been a different story. She said they had, certainly had their opportunities. Neely has a chance, and that's a, a goal there for Eric Neely. Straight from the face off. Crashed hard towards the net. And Eric Neely has his first goal as a Sheffield Steeler. No matter Stanna. No matter Stanna five, Sheffield Steelers one. And they do have a consolation goal. Paul, we uh, heard from you on the Steelers' website immediately after the game. We're back at the hotel now. You've had a chance to look at some video and uh, perhaps uh, uh, your reflections on, on a night that perhaps could have been. Uh, bad mistakes, David. And uh, first goal was a three-on-three. -three. We end up chasing behind the net. And, you know, they, they throw the puck from behind the net. You don't score from behind the net. You score from in front of the net. So I don't know why we're chasing into areas we don't need to be in. And, uh, you know, they get that first goal after a minute and a half. And uh, you think... You know, that was a cheesy one, an easy one. We gave them that opportunity. And the second one, we had full puck possession. We threw it up the wall and nobody there. And it came all the way back as a guy parked out in front of Moose. And then, uh, but we, you know, up until that point, I didn't think there was anything in the game. And we had some opportunities and some chances we didn't bury. And Yam Team takes a penalty, you know, an interference penalty, stupid interference penalty at the start of the third period. And then Davy Phillips gets called by what looks like a guy's faking, you know. But then Ben could have got one by a trip in front of the net. Let's just focus. And there's the game right there. There's the game gone. So uh, that, was, uh, that was a little disappointing. But what we've got to do is we've got to pick ourselves up. We know it's a tournament. You know, they could go on and lose the next two games. We could go on and win the next two games and, uh, and see where that takes us. So I, I, I'm a little disappointed defensively how we, 
we reacted. I'm getting a little bit annoyed at the amount of opportunities we're giving teams when we're trying to push to get back in from a power play point of view and taking stupid offensive zone penalties. And uh, our focus has got to be better tomorrow. Is it also frustrating that when you do create chances, you're not burying those chances well, at that, the moment? That's because the there sport. were some clear cut ones. David, that's the sport. You know, we if we you know, we're putting ourselves in a position to, to score goals and we don't take them on the night through. I mean, their goaltender was good tonight. I think we exposed Moose a little bit tonight. Uh and uh, he made some key saves for us, but I thought we were we were poor defensively. We took a poor decision at the start of the third period when I really did think if we got the first goal, you know, a two-one goal, we would have, we would have carried on from that. But they're a good team. They've got great speed, good skills, and uh, you know, they didn't take penalties at stupid times. But our power play needs to be better. We need to support a little bit better. It's uh, it's a higher level than what we play back home, and uh, that showed tonight in special teams. Talk to us about the Robert Dowd situation. We've seen him walk in here on, on crutches. It doesn't look good. No, I don't think it is good. I think we've. Uh, I think Robert's got a serious MCL problem. So <sighs> when it rains. Mm. Yeah, that in all intents and purposes is, is probably from now till close to the end of the year. Yeah, I mean John out. You know, Kirky didn't make it because of illness, <clears> and, and now Dowdy and it's that Continental Cup curse that, that, that comes back and haunts us all. But. Uh, you know, we've got, we've got to pull our socks up and, and, and go again tomorrow. And I'm expecting us to kick back tomorrow. How do you do that then? Because you will be short-benched. You are a little bit down and beaten and battered at the moment. How do you make sure that they are well, ready for know, 5 o'clock tomorrow? We, we, we'll have a look tomorrow morning. You know, we'll have a look at what we did well and what we didn't do well. We've got to, you know, that's our job. It's a process every game. And uh, we didn't do things too well in certain areas that we need to get better at. And... Uh, Good speed and good teams can expose that a little more than maybe it does back home at times. And uh, but you know it's a, it's a learning process. We're going to have a good talk about the strengths of uh, of Mints and what they're about. They're a very good hockey club as well. And yeah, we'll probably be at three lines tomorrow. And Fran Skiller, I don't know if he's playing tomorrow. Right now, the medical team are working on that, so we could be down to five D. So when we go home, it's going to be tough because Fitzgerald's out, Yamteen's out. Dowd's going to be out, Frankie maybe, but hey, opportunities for other guys. And uh, we'll get Kirky back and, uh, and we'll see where we go. So y you can only deal with, with the cards you dealt with. And uh, we, ha we have enough to kick back tomorrow. Is it easy to get down and forget perhaps the level that we're playing at, which isn't, if you like, the level we play at for 30 weeks of the year? Uh, it is, it is. But, uh, you know, I just didn't think we did ourselves any justice. A little bit like the first game over in Copenhagen. And, and no excuse. You know, the club sent us out two days early and we were ready. We knew about them. But uh, it was the, you know, like I said, I mean, in the last few games we've been taking penalties in the offensive zone. But we don't need to take. It's given teams the opportunity to bury us, and that's what they did with that third goal. And then I felt, you know, I felt that on the bench that oh, here we go. But in tournament hockey, you never know. You never know what's around the corner, and we've got to have a good look at ourselves tomorrow. Have a good look at the opposition we're playing tomorrow, and and enjoy the game. You know, and we've got what 20 fans that have made this long, long journey over here, and they want to see their Steelers team uh, give everything they have, and we'll make sure that that happens.